Hey now, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. I am Simple Jack from Nation 30, and I really appreciate you stopping by. Before we kick things off, let me introduce the team. First, we have one of the smartest players in the game from Nation 285, Lumberg. Next, we have Nikki Nikki from Nation 52 and Kitchy from Nation 425. Not only are these two knowledgeable, they're also amongst the most talented content creators for Age of Origins. Finally, from Nation 524, we have Maddie D. This is the player I am dubbing the architect. All you have to do is watch his channel and you'll understand why. Okay, guys, the format is very simple. Together, we, we have close to 20 years of game experience. The idea here is to discuss and explore some of the hot topics centered around the game. To the viewers, if you have questions, please drop them in the chat. We'll try to get to as many as possible. We can also table some of them for another show. All right. Let me run down the list of topics. Kind of prepared about seven topics. The first one, and it's going to include that uh, Warplane Research uh, Center, is C40. The second topic is going to be about mergers. Third topic, we'll discuss mid-range. Fourth topic is melee hit points versus long-range hit points. Fifth topic is how to limit your spending to efficient items. Sixth topic is important six stars as it pertains to 1,000 or 300 fragments. And then seven, if, if time permits, we're, we're going to talk about why you keep playing the game. So thanks, everybody. How's everybody doing today? We're Patty, good. Nikki, Lumberg, good to have you guys. Thank you very much. So <laughs> I'm going to start off with Lumberg because the first topic is C40, and I think he's done quite a bit of research on this, and he's seen a lot um but let me preface this uh you know c40 is you know this game evolves everybody knows that uh from c38 eventually we're going to go to c40 we don't have definitive timelines as to when that's going to happen but lumberg why don't you weigh in about the c40 thanks jack thanks for thanks for hosting and getting us all together um, you know, it's it's probably no secret that C40 is on everyone's mind. I have heard people say C41, and that probably tells you that nobody really knows, right? So I think it's going to be C40 because, um, you know, based on a similar game, War and Order, that's kind of the sequence that they followed. But, you know, the games did digress quite a bit. And, um, you know, the whole concept of C40 is T13 troops, and you know that could either be at 40 or 41. Um, the timing seems to have been usually in a anniversary. So you know, uh, if you really think about kind of the progress of the game, people have been C38 for quite a while, and they've stopped their spending. So just from from a viewpoint of losing the mega spenders, C40 has to come out soon. So that's kind of my quick thoughts on it is that we don't know if it's going to be C40 or 41, but it's imminent, it feels like, just because you know the content and the spending needs to continue. Yeah, and just to follow up on that, um, most of the players that... Uh, Titan equipment was released not too long ago, and for those whales that have been buying every single pack, they are almost at the point where they're completely maxed out. So the only thing left for big players to spend on is going to be the island. And that's few and far between. Yeah, and the island is is kind of a 
a big spin. I mean, you can go forever on spinning on that, but I'm, you're absolutely right. So they've got to have a different avenue for people to, well, at least for the spenders to, to kind of expand out. Does anybody in their nation have uh, uh, cities that are ready to go straight to C40 as soon as they hit? Um, um, we have one that may be close. I think we've I got think maybe one or two that. Uh, yeah, I think Lead God would be as well. Lead God and Zombie League would be. They're probably just uh, uh, buying rain just to be on the same side. Okay. Lumberg, anybody in your nation? There's probably two that might be close, but you know we we're suffering from a lot of the big spenders just getting tired of spending or the game in general. You know this is a long game, so you know they're 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 not as motivated to kind of save up to get to C40 in one day. So a lot of them have kind of you know stopped spending and they're wanting more quality of game and quality of mergers. So there has been a little bit of a you know shift. So um, you know and. Many people aren't excited about it, right? C40 just means more spending and more differential between, you know, the the strong and the weak. Yeah, and I mean, I'm a C38 myself, um, a relatively fresh C38, and the thought of C40 just really scares my bank account, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I don't want it to actually happen. I think it's going to significantly increase the gap between the non-spenders and the big spenders even more than it already is. Most games, uh, the big spenders might be 25% stronger than you know the non-spenders. This game, it's like 2,000%. It's it's already ridiculously huge. Yeah, I I think you I think it will definitely increase the gap. But to be honest with you, I mean the the big spenders have always been ahead. I mean, whether it's, you know, by a hundred percent or 200%, um, it's not like that C34 was going up against the, the big spenders anyway. So you just kind of have to game plan for uh, a bigger city. And I think we've touched on it before, but like going to C40 is going to make certain cities obsolete. So, uh, you know, the rest of the nation has to catch up. So in that respect, there's going to be a gap, but, for the most part, I think everything will still the gameplay will 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 change somewhat, but you're still going to have the same kind of competition that it was before, right? The big spinners were always killing you, anyways. So, um, I, you know, I I'm I'm afraid of the gap, but I don't think it's going to be as bad as everybody makes it out to be. Well, now with the gap with the C38, if you have like a a solo C38 hit. Um, you know, a, a well-organized alliance, they can actually combat that just with sheer, you know, numbers. They may lose on points or something, but they can win the battle. Um, at C40, that's going to drastically change, though. That's true. Nikki, dude, how about your nation? Do you have any, I'm sure you have several guys ready to step up three or four of them I'm not sure i mean the same as lumber um many of them are not spending or are getting tired of the whole spending a lot on every event you know yeah because like the game progresses more when there's a lot of when the big spender reaches to the max point right but in the long run it's, it gets tiring you know yeah, that's actually one of the topics that we might be able to touch on today. Like, uh, and I have a a big opinion about that because this game really is long. And like, if you don't pace yourself, if you don't set this game up the way that you like to play, and you're always trying to catch, you know, that uh, brass ring, you're you're really going to burn yourself out. So that's a yep. topic. But um. Uh, one of the one of the points on the topic that uh, Lumberg put together was the pros and cons for Camel on the C40 release. Can you uh, talk about that, Lumberg? Sure. You know, one of the things, and and Brian in chat brings this up, and I think that's a good good point, is that um, you can see a sense of urgency that Camel has in merging. Right. So they took a little bit of a break um, right around the end of the year period. 
And then there's a really renewed sense of urgency in merging. So merging is what they've figured out will keep keep the players busy and interested, right? I mean, Maddie's been very busy with his merger and you know just planning it, coordinating it, and then bringing everything together, right? So you can kind of see the sense of urgency in merging. That tells me that you know Camel is trying to you know they're, they're pretty smart, right? So they know that if they release, it's a very fine balance. If they release the C40 update too quickly, they're going to lose kind of all the meat for the uh, people that will hit C40 to hit, right? So it's it's going to be no fun if you're just, and you can even see this on some of the um, videos too, right? The C40s kind of leave each other alone. They they want to go after people that they can mass massacre. If that group of people are uh, that. <laughs> is available for mass massacre widely quits because the game becomes too disjointed between the strong and the weak, you know, the game's going to die. So I think they are trying to match it with kind of this urgency around giving the people what they want with mergers being more agreeable to that. And, and, you know, you can see that it's a very fine line that Camel is trying to walk between how do I keep my biggest revenue makers still engaged in the game while, you know, not ruining kind of all the, uh, the the foundation that keeps them interested so that's a fine balance yeah so you know th- that kind of is a segue into something is i know we've got these mega spenders but you know how many do we really have in the game that are at that level and like 30 to 40 something like that i would say that that's not even the top 10 percent of the revenue generated from the game though if you look at it holistically. Yeah, I never thought about that, but uh, I don't know. I think the top spenders do generate quite a bit, but uh, to, you know, to your point, uh, I, I don't know the number, but it just seems significant because I've seen comparisons where one top spender could outspend, you know, the norm of two other globes. So, you know, it's yeah, no, absolutely. They may outspend five nations, but if there's 30 ridiculous spenders and there's 900 nations, the it kind of shifts the balance to the rest of the players, not those massive whales. But, but Kim will uh, ne- never release those numbers. I think to uh, Lumberg's point, though, that, I mean, the game just constantly has to evolve. It can't, if you ever stop, it's 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 not... Uh, you know, you're going to you're going to make people lose interest. So it's it's a balance to where you keep expanding, you keep expanding the cities, but you don't have people jump off the back end. But um, to Maddie's point, I'm kind of like him. I feel that I like to sit at a, a max level for a while. You know, I like to just sit and just relax, not have to worry about getting up to C39 and C40. Um, right away again. So it it has been. I don't. I can't remember. I, I don't know how long I've been a C thirty eight, but it's it's been nice to just not have to worry about you know upgrading uh, all those other uh, things. And I've I've heard a lot of speculation. I think Maddie, you you know some of the prereqs, or you have speculated as to what some of the prereqs are going to be. Yeah, I, I think Lumber. I, I learned those from Lumber's oh, that's, video, that's, so he he may speak better to that as far as the comparison to wow. Well, I'll, I'll let you do it. It's been a while since I did that and I forgot to be honest. Oh my <laughs> goodness. You're going to make me wing it. So it, wow kind of mimics this game. Uh, wow is camels mythical um, fantasy type game. Whereas this one's like a zombie apocalyptic type game. The things that we see happening there tend to roll over into this game and it was released how long before us do you know lumber yeah they're about two years ahead so they're on their sixth year yeah so so the things we can pretty much discern is that once c40 or c41 is released uh the academy will go up to level 40 and it will unlock an advanced research tree, which will take some uranium. Um, we can also believe that the academy will be a prerequisite to go to 39 or 40, as well as the hospital. And of course, the uh, 
you know, the troops that go along with the city levels as well. Yeah. So the stormtroopers and cannons. So we're not getting like inside information. This is essentially just taking the sister game that camel makes. And, um, you know, they, a lot of their structure is exactly the same as AOO. So we're essentially just, ma- just matching what they do or what they've done to what we're about to do. Sounds, sounds like it makes sense. Um, you mentioned the technology tree that is going to be within the academy. Everybody's academy is like at level 30 right now, or at least or at the max. And if C40 comes out, I wonder if we're going to have to shoot that academy up all the way to level, you know, 39 or 40 before we can start upgrading the. That. Yeah, th- so that's, that's going to be that's going to be a definite if it, if it mirrors what they did in wow. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of uranium just to get that guy up there. That's heavy. That's right. So, you know, a big caveat is if the game follows the same uh, path as the sister game, but you know, in that new Academy um, from that, the new research available actually costs uranium to research. So some of the skills are worth it. Some of them aren't, you know, so, but um, it does cost uranium to research. So then everybody has to kind of tackle that secondary decision making that do I spend uranium on doing some of these skills that are worth it or do I just get my city level higher up? Yeah, and I think in Lumber's video, the consensus with, was with the WoW player base is the research is not worth the troops that you get from your upgraded city. That's going to be big. So, all right, on C40, round the room. Anybody want to take a guess when it's going to come out? August. August. I actually guessed uh, this month or next month. Yes. The DSM guessed March. Um, I'm, I'm guessing April. But- Nikki? I'm not trying to get banned. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nobody's trying to get banned. I mean, we're just all speculating. I mean, nobody has inside yeah. information. We're just talking you about know, it. Camel, Camel, Camel does not like us speculating. You know that? Yeah. Well, but my speculation in August is kind of based on that's right around the time that players will start to have Maria completely maxed. And the top spenders will have nothing to spend on. Yeah, actually, I almost totally forgot about this. So uh, I think that uh, new building is going to tie in with the new C40. Does anybody who uh, Lumberg or Maddie or anyone does it have any information about that building just from what we've extrapolated from, you know, rumors? I mean, every everything we know is rumors at this point. Um, you know, there's rumors of data mines and stuff like that, um, but we've got no real confirmation from Campbell at this point. So it's, you know, anything we say could be completely wrong. And I don't want to guess based on that. <laughs> um, I was hoping that uh, it was going to be a new troop type so that it can... Uh align well, with the, formations but uh yeah but, i mean based on the rumors um they've got hit points and and defense so that would lead us to be- and attack so that would lead us to believe that it's a an attackable and you know troop that's able to be in battle which uh the other thing that i thought it was and i'm i'm if we're following the wow uh game then i'm i think uh we pointed out that it, it's not likely, but, and I'm glad is that there might be a new resource that has to be mined. And that warship uh, or warplane building is the, uh, the vehicle that we would use to mine it. But it, it almost sounds as though there won't be a new resource. And I don't know, I'm just speculating. Uh, there won't be a new resource in this. So that means it's either a new troop type or a supplement to a scout or it's, um, uh, something that you we can use in an event or any game or something. Yeah, I mean, based on the information we have, it seems to be a troop type if all the rumors were true. 
Um, there, I mean, there's a couple of rumors saying, you know, it's a moon mining base, this, that, and the other. But if this game is really the sister game to WoW, we're not going to see a new resource type in Uranium. will actually be, you know, the resource for the foreseeable future. Very cool. All right. Well, um, I think we covered C40. Uh, we can kind of move on to the next topic, but does anybody else want to add anything about the C40 that's going to be released or uh, we, we believe will be released? Good. Okay. All right. Uh, topic number two that we came up with is mergers. Um, <laughs> and again, <laughs> another uh, topic that uh, can easily raise the eyebrows of Camel to say, uh, what are you guys talking about? But um, some of the things that we, you know, we were really asking or thinking about is, can you influence a decision and timing of a merger? And, you know, Camel's almost, you know, is going to say no, because um they have to because that it, that i assuming that wouldn't be fair but uh have any of you guys ever seen an instance uh where you feel that that was not the case um i can say with certainty that vips can have an influence on a merger um you know to to what degree don't really want to get into that, but I will say with 581, um, they got merged very early compared to the other nations in the 500s, just due to their, you know, they have three mega whales if you want to get down to it. Uh, 527, we just got a merger and we had a little bit of influence on ours as well. Okay. So, and it's just, um, Back and forth correspondence with VIPs, which, you know, may or may not have an influence. Yeah, Maybe. and 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 everybody's going to message their VIP and request a merger. I mean, yeah. th that that is a very common thing to do. Just because you have VIPs, don't think that you're going to be able to force a merger. It's you know, it, if you get all your VIPs together, you might be able to influence that a little bit more. Or if you have like just a, a mass congregation of mega whales like they have in 581, that definitely has some weight to throw around. I mean, every time that I've talked to anyone that's associated with Camel, they've, you know, they've stuck to the same story, which, you know, I believe in that, you know, it's it's about activity. It's about spend. It's about um, logins. It's about unique characters within a world. So, and it's also about who you can match up with or who you can actually uh, uh, merge with because they have to be similar. If you have two nations or three nations that are dissimilar, then, you know, you run the risk of one nation just totally squashing the other. So it, a lot of things well, have to match up. And I think it, uh, I think because of all those factors, everybody reads into it and they kind of speculate that, oh, well, that was a VIP thing. So we're not really saying it's, you know, all VIPs. There's a lot of factors that go into it. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, if you look at historical mergers, and I've tried to, to kind of dig into some, I mean, it's 50-50. You know, half of them are going to be reasonable and the other half are just going to erupt in civil war because you've got too many egos there. Yeah. Um, every merger that I've heard of recently, though, they I mean, it's almost as though every nation or every world learns from other worlds to where it's like, look, you know, we're stuck with each other. We can we can have a civil war if you want. But every time I've ever seen a merge recently, it's always gone really smooth. So I think people know. Really no, I, there's at least two this round that have not been smooth. Um, <laughs> it's actually very comical. Tell me, um, tell me the nation because I want to jump over there. Take a look. Um, I'd have to go look them up. Somebody brought it up to my attention uh, yesterday. <laughs> I have to get back to you on that one. Let me find it. Okay. Um, we had another tip or another point. Um, first time merger worlds tips and advice. Uh, we've all been through at least two mergers. I'm guessing at least one. Um, What's some of the the advice that you would give 
to new nations when they're right about to merge. Oh man, you got to get everybody in the same room. Um, oh, the, lead- yeah. the leaders of the nation, you just got to do it. Yeah. Um, I think, and this is coming from me being in other like nations like three five seven and three twenty. Um, don't rush into, you know, making an alliance with another alliance with another nation. As as much as you know, if, even if you do talk to each other and think that you know, game wise, you actually play the same way six months down the track it might not be the same so i think it's better if you go into the merge thinking that your three nations going into a merge and then you know three months later if everything is still going the way that you predicted it while you were talking towards the merge then go for one big alliance or two or three so yeah it uh invariably one thing that happens is of the different worlds there's got to be one person that kind of takes the lead because if you have um you know three worlds merging and you know five different leaders you're still going to be going in a lot of different directions so of those three worlds merging having one person that's kind of the centerpiece that's going to guide it uh i think is necessary uh if everybody's not on the same page you're going to have a lot of different philosophies trying to be better, but they're going about it in, in, in different ways and it's going to make for like slow development. So, um, yeah. And I mean, we just merged yesterday into five, two, four. And, you know, as soon as we found out we were merging, the first thing I did was set up a discord channel and, you know, I got a translation bot. There are translation bots out there. I translated into 10 different languages. Uh, we've got almost 400 people across the three nations in that one Discord. And we kind of put a sorting hat on, and we just kind of sorted them into the different alliances, you know, one through five. And we just made it as organized as possible. We split up the land. We mapped it out with benefit buildings. I mean, we we thought of everything, and it's a lot of people's hard work and effort that made this thing come together for us and be so great. Hey, Nikki, you you were with Fifty Two when they merged, right? You're on mute if you're okay. Sorry, I was in the wrong I was in the wrong Discord. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I probably joined them. Two months, two months after they had the merge. How how did that go? Uh, because I know a lot of nations, when they see that they're going to merge with fifty two, they get excited because they're super powerful. But they also know that they're um, uh, heavy handed. So how did that go? Um, from what I remember, it was it what was it eighty seven and sixty eight. 68 top alliance really wanted to go with ev1 and so did 87 top alliance so the 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 big leaders of those two nations really wanted to like get into 52 and ev1 so it was more of okay let's all get together you know top players here second active alliance here then they created two other semi-active casual players you can go to these two alliances and then that's how it started and then there was like the rules of oh um no farms with over bp i guess like not too many troops and if they fail that then everybody started killing them and then it's also started a lot of people revolting (laughs) because you know nobody likes people killing their farms right yeah, um, I, I know a lot of people get offended, but I definitely think that's one of the, the main criteria that has to happen is that the nation has to set that standard. You know, it depends on where you are on the scale of, of the worlds, like the older worlds, uh, you know, where C-38s are really uh, prevalent. You you really have anything C-30 and below has to just be a farm. And you might even speculate that like C-32 and below are farms. Because if you're not a C-34 by, you know, after four years of playing, then 
you know, there's, there's not a lot of hope for you. And in, in, you hear the talk all the time. It's like, we need to grow. We need this to do that to grow. But, you know, after four years, I know people that don't spend at all and they're about to hit C37. So, you know, I don't really buy it that much, but. Yeah. I mean, I can say in, in, in five, two, seven, when I was there, we had some non spenders and, you know, they had their five farms, they did what needed to be done and they were C32 after one year. So, I mean, it, you either have to spend money or put in the effort to, to get there. It's one or the other. If you don't do both of them, you're a liability. And that's the, we also, we also know that, yeah, you can get, you can get all the structures to, you know, 37, 36, 37, 38. But the internals as to where your equipment is, your officers, your titles, which is basically, you know, the meat of your city, you still have to put some money into that. You can't just, you know, not be a free, be a free player for that. Yeah, that's one of the things that uh, I've, I'm I'm really starting to see not just, you know, in my world, but in a lot of worlds where 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 we are now or where a lot of nations are right now is that there's that feeling of players that are like, well, we have the right to play or whatever. But to Maddie's point, you know, if you're a player in any kind of team and you don't develop, you're a liability to that team. And, you know, Everybody says, yeah, I'm free to play whatever I want to. Well, they're free to kill you. So uh, <laughs> there's. Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. I mean, and, and Nikki, she plays in the murder, murder capital of the entire game. <laughs> so she knows it better than anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Nikki too is ferocious. When you look at how to clean up a world, uh, you know, you go to World 52 to see what they do. <laughs> Best dead world. So Lumberg, I know you've done a lot of extensive research on mergers and not just what we've been talking about here, but what, what kind of two cents do you have about mergers and any kind of advice? Sure. I think, you know, one of the questions that I get a lot is a lot of debate around, you know, what do people, what do nations need to do to kind of hurry up the merger, right? And, and a lot of that could be through all of the above or none of them, right? So it's always going to be unknown, the criteria that town uses. Uh, but some of the things that, you know, we all just talked about, which is kind of nation rules, nation cleaning, cleaning up your liability, actually serves the dual purpose of making you a better candidate. It does seem clear that, you know, just based on many conversations that I've had with people and, you know, people share the information, um, in private, right? So I can't share all of that, but it is clear that, you know, Camel does try to keep the balance of the game in play. So they don't want to merge too many strong worlds together. And, you know, there is certain criteria that they have to be, uh, meet. Invariably, however, aligned with everything is, you know, revenue generation and spending of the, of the nation. But, you know, some of the things that I wanted to kind of mention that nations should do is some of those things, you know, kill the dead weight in your nation, right? So, you have to be at a certain BP level to be even matching with certain other nations. So if you're heavy on the BP, if you haven't cleaned up, if you haven't set up nation rules, it's high time that you do that, especially A, even it will it will hearken the, the timing of the merger and it'll help in the matching of the merger too. And then when you do get merged, it's going to make things a lot more easier. So killing the dead weight in the nation, and dead weight would be kind of some of the things that Maddie Nikki, all of you guys just mentioned, which is, you know, the players that aren't really aren't contributing. Um, that being said, I will say it is really important because, you know, there's a fine line between, and a lot of the people in the older nations know this, that if you go into civil war, if, if, if cleaning your nation kind of involves having too many conflicts, you'll create these, this animosity that will never get beyond, meaning you don't care about the nation, you only care about your alliance. And that view is kind of, you know, counterintuitive to world versus world events so it's kind of like yep carry a big stick so i think the formula that works the best is communication as as, as simple as that sounds it is communication you know having your strong players kind of aligned is really important because if you have a dispute between your strong players 
like your two C-38s nation kind of um, flag flagship players, that's going to be the end of the nation. And you can see that in some of the nations. It's it's entertaining when you fight them, but you can see really that the two big, you know, move makers, when they clash, that's kind of what forces things apart. So communication is really important. And even, you know, translation is critical, like having people that can cross those cultures and that language barrier. We all know that, I know you guys have seen it, but like, you know, you'll post something Somebody will say something in, in Korean and it will say, I love you, right? And it's like, what? <laughs> that doesn't translate. You, you paste it into Google and it's like not even related, right? So translation is absolutely terrible and that can cause wars. So uh, that's kind of my two cents. That can definitely cause wars. I have I've killed many of people over some mistranslation issues. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think the whole mistranslation is part of Camel's plan just to... <laughs> pump up more wars because the more civil wars there is the more the player is going to spend and then everybody is spending to survive you know or to be able to play, play the civil war and play events so i think it's just part of camel's idea of the whole um, mistranslation i don't think they're not going to fix it because it brings them money absolutely uh, and if, if, if you I ask can... um yeah. sorry if you ask rusty or glaren they've uh They've done, they've done um, translation from like an emoji to Korean, and some of the emojis actually translate to Korean in "I will kill you" or something like that. <laughs> and they actually had to tell their go. VIPs like, "What is happening with this?" It's like this is an emoji, and it actually gets translated into like "die." I'll I'll have to I'll have to check that with Garen, but yeah, that was what was happening with their nations before as well, and that started wars. Does Does anybody know if because I've heard that you know Camel looks for translators? Do they take in those translators to work on the translating algorithm, or do they take them in to do like live translating as they read it? So here's the way that it works is they are trying to translate it themselves because it saves money. Google charges them per character. Oh. So it's kind of a 50-50 mix between what's translated with Google and what they are translating from my understanding. Yeah, I've seen I've seen, you know, uh, languages in another language um a different language where they would write out these huge texts and um, you can use like a translation tool and you'll figure out what it says. But then what the game translates, it, it, it's almost literally like a copy and paste from another post. And I'm like, what in the world is this? So yeah, that, it's, that it's crazy. Bugs. Um, but, but going back to the topic of, you know, what should your world do? If I could go back and do it all over again and, you know, start in a new nation, I would basically set the rules early on and say you can't have over higher than you know t4 troops on farms and you must be c30 by one year and you know give them a deadline and that sounds harsh i've never heard of any nation putting a deadline like that on a new world but that's really what's needed because those c30s after a year Anybody below that is really a liability. I mean, they're they're not going to grow up. Yeah, but then you'll get those C thirties that have T four troops, but they have like six million. <laughs> well, I, if they've got six million T four troops, I don't care. I know. I'm just kidding. They can do whatever seen. they want. They're actually <laughs> probably good, decent Titan traps at that point. I don't know. I've encountered. I've I've gone through one merchant in earlier nation. The, the problem is always trying to explain what a farm is. Like like to us, you know, a farm is something, it's, it's a city that you hit multiple times to get RSS from. But yeah, some players don't consider that as a farm. They still consider it as a playable city. Yeah, and, and I mean, th there's a, a slight point to it because you can use your farms to kill monsters, and mark and monsters arguably give better, you know, resources and materials than actual farming. 
but that's a lot of work. Once you're into the game deep, you've got to go and do that on all your farms. I mean, it gets old quick. Yeah. Yeah, so I would agree. Like, probably the biggest thing once the merge is going to happen is get all your world leaders, get them all on the same page, and get, you know, nail down the philosophy that you guys are going to follow. Because if you have, you know, two C-38s that are different, and you know they're going to take their own alliances with them you're going to have civil war so it's important to have that point but here's one thing that i and I, especially in my world what i'm seeing a lot of is you know our when our world came together there was a lot of different accounts and as people you know after 4 years after people leave a lot of people start collecting accounts because you know somebody leaves they give them an account or whatever so you've got players that have like five alt accounts and they all try to keep them up. And that's where I see some of our bleeders is that, you know, if I've got, you know, a C38 plus four C35s and, you know, I'm not taking care of them, you're going to get killed. So one of the things that I always try to push for in our nation is, look, you know, don't hoard those accounts. Just give them to somebody, give them to somebody that can actually do something with it. You know, try to grow or do something but over time when you're playing this game so long you get so uh worn out by trying to take care of so many different cities and that's one of the things that in my opinion kind of pushes people away because it's it becomes a chore more than it is fun so my advice is always you know get rid of those people that have those hoard accounts and all those alt accounts because they're you know eventually going to cost you yeah, if that, if that person oversleeps one time, you know, it's not just their main city. It's the other cities, too, that are feeding points. It's it's just not a good idea. Yeah. Because everybody oversleeps at least once. Um, all right, let's see. What else was on the mergers? Anything else on mergers that we need to tap? Was it tips and advice worlds? Hey, Jason, thanks very much, Woody. Oh, we do have a question. How long is the cleaning periods your nations before void? Oh, that's going to yeah. vary, and you're going to yeah. get. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kitchy. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, it's going to vary from nation to nation. Depends on how the nation. Mine is 24 7. Yeah, 24 7. <laughs> 24 hours, seven days of the week, non stop, all the time, you know, in boy, in frenzy, non stop. We can, if somebody chills drop, it's gone. Again, murder capital I mean, it, of the game. It's the best way to reduce your bleeders. If you have a lot of bleeders, your best way is to just get them at, at any time, not, not give them a chance. You, you just go ahead and you just kill it because. When you're, let's say you're in a void and it's really neck and neck that the points are really close to each other. And then out of nowhere, oh, what, what, what is this big gap? Why are we 2 billion gaps below? Oh, because, oh, your second alliance just did a defense and oh no, <laughs> they just gave so many points and here you are back to square one. Now you gotta go back and get 3 billion points so you cannot lose, you know? So that's why it's best to just get rid of them. Don't wait till the last minute because it just, it'll be too much in the end. It'll just be too much. Yeah, <laughs> People don't realize how much it costs the top cities to make up the points of one mistake. It, yeah. it's, yeah. a, it's actual money and it makes us mad. I mean. That's why it's very expensive. If you have leaders and you have farmers, it gets super expensive for you to be able to pull a win because you have your farmers and your bleeders just giving points left and right. And then you're just spending money just to get the win. And it's very frustrating. It makes you just want to give up and just be a, ty a tyrant and destroy everybody, right? So that's why it's just best to just get it done and over with. Don't wait till the last minute. Yeah, so I'll, I'll add my two cents on there because... In our world, our world is super fat. So 
Um, we have a lot of dead weight that we, you know, certain leaders kind of look out for that dead weight and it's kind of a pain in our rear. But what you're going to run into is, you know, when you do purges, uh, the, the, the leaders that want to kill off the world, they're going to pick at least, you know, two to three days to, to purge for, for void. Uh, the ones that want to try to protect those farmers, they're going to just say, you know, whatever, 24 hours or something. It's just something where they can, that farm can afford to keep a one day shield or two day shield for, for the event and for the, uh, 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 void. So my suggestion is, is if you're that camp that wants to kill off your world, make those purges more than three days so that you can force them to either get down in troops to where they can hide them all, or they're, you know, just spending themselves out of the game because they can't afford to do all the shields. And, you know, most nations now farms should not be able to mine for gold because it's just a waste of gold. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say one more thing is if you're going to murder people, do it early. Don't wait a year. Because the longer you wait, the more invested they are in the game and the more of a nuisance they're going to be. You got to nip it in the bud quick. Yeah, so that's that, our problem right now. You see that lantern, that red light I've got? That's because we're we're almost a year and a half in our merge still killing off people. So they are so entrenched that it's just a nonstop flag fest. It's you know you thing. can turn that off, right? Yeah, I know that, but I'm just saying that um, to uh, Maddie's point, you definitely want to do it early. You don't want these. And, you know, look, I, I get it. Everybody gets a right to play, but everybody gets a right to kill you, too. So you don't want to let the people that don't contribute to stick around long enough to where. Um, You're wasting money in events. Yeah, exactly. Push exactly. For a win. Because oh, like a, they're not spending, but you're because if but even though they're not spending, they're free to play and whatever. The one that is spending is you know the point of the game is to win events or to play. It's a war game, yada yada. But the the players that spend and are pushing are the ones you know that can make the rules and can decide what the nation will be. Not the player that is like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and do nothing, or I'm just going to play the way I want to play. Well, the players that spend can play the way they want to play, too. And I just think that, it's like I said, it's very important to just crowd control the the farmers and all that, you know? Yeah, I mean, someone okay. once proposed the idea of a farmer cannon, where we can... Once a week, we can send one farmer to a world all on their own, and they can just gather together in one big <laughs> happy place. Yeah, I thought the island was that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah send them to the island. the island. You know, or there's an app for that. It's called Farmville. They can join Farmville. Yes. <laughs> no, but it's, it's also because we, I, I think with me, like I started this game when the pandemic hit up. So you had time. To actually, you know, spend twenty four hours in void or frenzy, but now that almost everything's back to normal, I don't want to spend twenty four hours in the game. Like I want to spend, you know, a bit in the game, get get points, kill something, and you know, go to the beach later on. It's it's <laughs> it's not doable anymore, <laughs> which is why it's it's also it makes you really angry that. Some people just say, oh, you know, like, I just want to play the game the way I want to play. So, like, mm, no, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. if you have but, infinite time, I don't. Yeah, that's how you lose top players. I mean, there's one player that I found out I was talking about yesterday. Uh, his name was Tao. And he was an amazing player, C38. But he was carrying his whole nation. He just gave up and quit because... He got tired of carrying his nation. Oh, That's yeah, a lot of that happens. Oh, burn up. It's better to lose your farmers than your C38s. I can mm -hmm. assure you. 
Yeah, for because sure. Because the C30 so, is the one pushing the nation forward, you know, depending on the C38, because not all of them do that. Well, guys, it's, well, yeah, it's, uh, I can't believe it's already been almost an hour. So, uh, we had like seven topics. We covered <laughs> like two. Let's cover one more, but I'll let you guys pick. We've got, um, mid range, uh, melee hit point versus long range hit point. Uh, how to limit your, uh, spending to efficient items, uh, Six star skills as it pertains to 1,300 fragments. That's kind of interesting. And then the last one is why do you keep playing the game? Uh, that one, number seven, is probably a show in itself. So I'll leave that one out. But you guys pick one more because I know we're running short on time. I want to be respectful of your time. Lumberg? I mean, anyone? Yeah, I mean, I'll pick one if you guys don't want. Go ahead. Yeah, so let's go with the the six stars one. Um, okay. Uh, as far as skills, if I could instantly pick six triple S skills, it would be the the two fleet size on Saki, the two fleet size on Morgan, and the triple S long range reduction on Aeon and Alexandria. Those to me are the six most important six star skills in the game. All right. Now say that one again now for, for which officers? So, uh, Morgan and Saki, they both, they get a fleet size and a cross nation fleet size. I would triple S both of those for four. And then on Aeon and Alexandria, the long range damage reduction is absolutely huge because 95% of the players are long range or 99%, let's be honest, are long range and damage reduction is huge in the, the calculations. Let me get, can you, I'm sharing mine. Can you see my officers now? I can. Let's, let's walk through and no judging guys. Come on. <laughs> Don't pick an officer. And we'll look at it. Uh, let's look at Aeon. Okay. All right, go to the six star. Oh, wait. To remodel them, or you want to talk about these? Uh, go to, uh, you know, hit the books or whatever you want to look at. Oh, this. Scroll down. This app. Yeah. yeah, the app there. The Windows app is garbage. I'll agree. Yeah, it's not letting me scroll. So, um, I'm just going to add a little bit to, to Maddie's comment, which I um, agree with. You know, one thing to keep in mind is, you know, which say um, you also want to cater how many you know, elite order packs you're buying, how many fragments you're going to have, right? So Maddie's probably at the top tier. And, you know, some of us other people will probably won't be able to pick a triple S. So, you know, you can just cater that down to like, you could, you'll you say, wait, double S is the best. But I'll give a good example just on fleet size. Um, so totally agree. If you are going to spend something um, a, a thousand books on to get a triple S fleet size is it. And um, if you really think about it, um, unless you're in a nation where you really need to kill people, you probably don't need um, a a rally size, and you don't need um, you know other than early game, you don't need Morgan's breakthrough skill. So if you're not using Morgan's breakthrough skill, that means you're going to have his fragments to play around with and hopefully get those fleet triple S, right? So that that's probably one consideration that you want to save those books for Saki, where you you're going to use her to get your breakthrough to all the way to level 18. So you want to be mindful in who you use the books on. So Morgan, don't use the books on, especially if, you know, you're most likely going to unlock Morgan, um, you know, to six star way sooner than you're going to be Saki. And you're going to be tempted to use those books on Morgan. But save it, save that thousand books for Saki when you do it, right? So the key thing in this game is you will be rewarded if you actually save enough for that long-term view. 
And to yeah. echo kind of Jack's point, this is a long game. And, you know, you don't need to be, you know, jumping into something. Like you unlocked Morgan Six Star, wait until you get Saki. So that's kind of my tips on that is like figure out what that you're going to use those books for, how much you're going to spend, where you think you're going to be. And, you know, wait, I know it's hard. I can't do it myself. Like you, you have it, it's sitting there. It's a lot of strength and you just get tempted. Yeah. And, and back to the Morgan and Saki fleet size. So I, and any six star skill in general, do not under any circumstances buy your first triple S skill. That is just reducing your roles later. Oh, hang on a second. Now say that one more time because I'm writing notes on that one. Do not yeah. buy. Well, so every time you lock a skill, you know, if you have no skills locked and you you waste a thousand books, I say waste on your first triple S skill. Well, now you're locking that skill. You're effectively reducing your roles by half. Save it for you know your third or fourth skill. Or in Morgan and Saki's case, save it for your second fleet size skill. You know, roll your first one, buy the second one with books. What is the strategy to, I mean, when you're trying to accumulate the fragments, I mean, you're obviously, you know, uh, remodeling over and over and over again. What do you do? What do you spend on remodeling for do you spend it on trying to hit that ss to sss or do you spend it on like say for instance if you can see my sake here you know i've got these three things the three bottom ones i don't really care about do you spend it on remodeling all three of those so that you can try to accumulate your thousand like what's the strategy to get to a thousand pieces I mean, honestly, it's just either buying packs or picking up stuff in the exchange store. Uh, but looking at your sake, if I were to, if I were to have your sake, you know, you've already spent all those fragments to open up all six star skills, right? Yeah. I mean, that's almost what three hundred fragments. Is it fifty or fifty eight? I can't remember. I think it's fifty eight. Yeah, I think it's 58 per. So, I mean, you've almost spent 300 fragments. You're there. Spend another 300 and it, get, you know, at least one triple S fleet size and then buy the other one with 1,000 points. The other skills don't matter on them. I mean, healing speed means a little bit, but... With your Saki right there, I would re-roll all five slots until I hit an, a triple S fleet size. Even if I've got two that are at 27 and the rest of the three are at one? Man, I, you know, I would advise people not to do what you did. Yeah. But, man, I don't know what to tell you there. Um <laughs> That that's a tough call, right? <laughs> that is a very tough call because that is a lot of uh, XP you put into those guys. I think I'm the first person to get officer shamed. Can you no. uh, can you show your Morgan? Yeah. My Morgan is that up. See him? Yes. So. Oh, you rolled early. So when you, uh, what do you do with your Morgan fragments? Uh, I haven't been buying Morgan lately, so nothing. <laughs> you don't have to buy him. You can just no, get him yeah. on other things. Yeah, I mean, that's true. But I mean, if I were to get Morgan fragments, I would just keep re-rolling these to try to get to, I'm not going to. I don't really care about the three other ones. So uh, I guess the opposite of what I did with Saki, I'm just going to try to re-roll these until I try to get SS. Yeah, but but you're really killing your odds by not having all slots unlocked. Like you're in a very precarious situation, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, my only other option is to, with all of these officers, with Braveheart and... um. Loreline, 
use a ton of fragments on them to accumulate a thousand so yeah. that I can go back to like a Morgan and try to buy the triple S on. Them. That's you know probably what I, mean? what I would do. Yeah. Because it's just thing. how much you've spent. See, so um, she's got like 85, so I can just gamble all day long. Her. And, you know, I get a lot more of her fragments than anybody else. Yeah, Brave Star and Lore Line seem to come in the most. Yeah, so I should be able to build but a thousand. It's a long ways away. But, you know, like a fleet size, in my opinion, is king in this game. It serves so many purposes. Um, you know, if you've got, you know, 800 LRA, well, you increase the number of troops. All of those troops that you're bringing in get those 800% LRA. Plus yeah. the you HP know, and the defense going with it. You know, even people with 900 long range against somebody, I don't know, like the, the thousands, like let's say 1,080, if they have better Titans, they can still win the person that has more long range than them that's true well yeah that's because I, I always uh, for me i get beaten by those 900s so i'm like well, why did i lose and i'm like yeah, oh, my titans God. titans are a different story i mean if we're just talking about officers and skills i mean we can take yeah, this yeah. conversation for years because there's so many variables but just straight yeah, up yeah. officers and skills I would say fleet size and long range damage reduction, which is only available yeah. on Aeon and Alexandria. But you know, you could get that mid range reduction too if you want to. But survive one percent. Mid rangers. Yeah, but one percent of the players are mid rangers. That's right. True. I mean, normally it's the C thirty fives and above, but you should really build around the majority, not long that one percent. That's true. I mean, mid rangers get a lot of uh, show because they get so many kills. But yeah, it and that actually is a topic that we can cover another day. Is uh, you know what's the good mix in your alliance or your world in mid rangers? Because um, I don't. Do you, does anybody see a trend for a lot of people going to mid rangers? I mean, it was pretty hot for a while, but I don't. I don't really see it happening now. I feel like um, it'll it will happen once T thirteens come out, maybe. Yeah, well, once those stormtroopers hit, um, mid range is gonna be crazy. Probably a lot of people switching, but I think the later worlds have a lot of a lot more mid rangers than the early worlds because the early worlds pretty much already locked in their stuff, and it's too much of a pain in the butt to go oh, back sure. and change everything. But the later worlds, for sure. I mean, in my line. It, during our merge, when we looked at everybody on paper for our number one, we only had one mid ranger. So I, I asked for volunteers to switch because I would like to at least have ten. Ten, wow, that's. I mean, they're killers early on. I mean, oh they're... yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, they can steal the show. I mean. Like uh, 114 with Asahi, she or he, uh, it, it's almost impossible to beat him, her with, uh, oh, yeah. in uh, like a beast. void because she just kills so much. And I mean, if she withdraws on even on bad fights, she'll still kill. So much. Yeah, that, that's a big mid range thing, right? That they'll hit and then they'll retreat and they'll get a buttload of kills and barely lose anything. If they've got Alexandria rescue and Aeon shield pop, they lose nothing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I want to be respectful of your time. I know that we wanted to keep this at about an hour. Um, what else on the six star? I mean, so essentially, you know, when you're gambling, you want to build up those 1,000 or 300 fragments to purchase those. And, you know, 
from what I've seen for the players that I've talked to, it really depends on your overall spend. Because if you're not spending a lot, it's going to take you forever to get 1,000 fragments. So I guess it really depends if you're, you know, a above average spender, then you can start shooting for those 1,000 fragments, you know, constantly remodeling to get it and then purchase um, the uh, skill that you want. But if you're not really a spender, then it doesn't make a lot of sense to wait for a thousand fragments, in my opinion. Yeah, if you're not a spender, you know, just settle for the uh, the SS uh, on on key skills, and and that's fine. If you're even a moderate spender, don't waste your first you know set of books on your first skill on an officer. Be patient. This game, like you guys said, was the long game. It's short-term weakness for long-term strength and money saving. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Um. So, Jack, um, someone in the live sh- in the YouTube live chat, mm-hmm. Ryan, he's asking, "What are your thoughts on melee cities?" You mean like flex nuts? Yeah, like flex nuts. Um. <sighs> I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I haven't done a lot of research on them. I know that um, if you're uh, if you can get all the Titan skills, they are pretty darn tough. But I I don't I don't really I can't really speak to melee. Yeah, I I can speak a little bit to them. Um, if you look at the damage on melee troops in general, it's just not good. Um, melee cities is a battle of attrition. And it's just their hit points outlasting the rest of your troops. Uh, Boss 2 and 581 is a huge melee city, bigger than Flex Nuts. If you watch some of his uranium mine battles, they go on for like a minute and a half sometimes. I mean, it's, it's really just attrition. Is it good to have one melee play, player in your alliance for Elite Wars? Absolutely. But it is a very expensive build, and I would not suggest that for the average player. <laughs> it's very expensive because you've got to you've got to hit those titans, those titan skills, right? I mean, that's really the only way you're going to pull it off. Well, you've got to hit the titan skills. Plus, you're going to lose troops in every fight. Question: Which one is the most expensive, melee or mid range? Melee, for sure. For sure, because you've got sure. you, you've got to get those titans maxed. Um, that very first awakening skill, um, Empress Escort, you, you need that sucker maxed. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I'll, so I'll how second many, that. How many shredders? How many shredders can you go in one recruit time compared to how many stormtroopers? Well, the ratio is the same. I mean, if you don't have draft, it's sixteen hundred worth of troops, no matter what you do. Stormtroopers are going to recruit a little bit faster just because they're a, a C thirty five troop and shredders are C thirty seven. I agree with Maddie. And plus, with um, the troopers, you recruit more of them than recruiting shredders i guess like the timing of recruitment no you actually recruit shredders faster than you recruit troopers because troopers you only get from one building whereas shredders you can get them from two building uh the ratios are the same though right one shredder is worth 10 stormtroopers i do have a suggestion for you know like Maddie brought up, um, I think he was referring to boss, big boss's second city. Um, you know, it's it's really hard to play unless you're just a gener- generous team player um, like Flex Nuts. Um, and you know, I think that you definitely need a heavy amount of spending to be successful in, in melee. But you know, those second cities that people get is not a bad idea to customize and make into that melee powerhouse, right? So the concept is, um, if you have a bunch of people with second cities, um, you know, that's some playground. There are probably spenders that quit. They have pretty decent Titans. That's, if any of them are a C-37, 
you know, those are good candidates to kind of make into that melee powerhouse as your second city. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic in elite wars. I mean, a, a, a full army with a, a good melee city can make or break a fight in elite wars. They're painful in global conquest as well. Yeah, global global as well. Mm, yeah, there's uh, I, the, yeah, there's one player that actually just sends all melee in one city and then all long range in their other city. Oh. And when they do hit, it's painful. I didn't realize how expensive it was. I I I noticed that. Um... I can't remember who told me, but their fights like last forever. Yeah, it's if you go into 581 and look at uh, the elite or the uh, uranium mines. I mean, it, if the big player hits boss boss's second city, it's a long fight. <laughs> All right, guys, we kind of went well over time. I appreciate everybody. Uh, Sticking and staying long. Um, we didn't get to cover as much as we want to, but that just means we'll have some uh, carryover for the next show. Um, hopefully we can all get back together and uh, plan something out soon. Maybe make this a regular schedule. I know that, you know, all of us have always been kind of talking about doing podcasts and stuff. And I think, you know, and this is everywhere, like especially with Woody. Woody's doing an awesome job. Oh, definitely always check his out. But as far as the AOO community is, is, is concerned, you know, every, everything's kind of growing with the media, with podcasts and uh, live streams. And I think it's good for the community. Even if we talk about topics that are somewhat controversial or something, something that camel might frown upon, it's not like we're, you know, setting waves or, tidal waves to, to clear out uh, players. We're just, you know, speculating and taking a look at the game because, I mean, this is a super long game and it's super involved, right? So, like, everybody you know, dedicates a lot of time and stuff. So, having these kind of uh, live streams really helps out. So, you know, everybody that's in the audience, I appreciate your time. Um, if you have questions that you'd like to see covered, you know, reach out to all of us. We can all be reached. Um, everybody has their link for their channel in the description. Please check everybody out. Um, the content with, with these guys is amazing. So uh, reach out to us. Let us know some of the things that you want to hear on podcasts and, you know, or um, some people that you'd like to get together with on podcasts. That would be great. But, uh, Outside of that, um, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Nikki. Thanks, Kitchy. Thanks, Lumberg. And thank you, Matty D. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the stream, and I will talk to everybody soon. All right. Thank you, sir. You guys have a good night. All right. Thanks, thanks everybody. Thank you, Jack. Have a good night. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.